In this section of the lecture, we'll be looking at poker yokes. So, when, when there are mistakes made by companies when serving customers, that can create a terrible experience. So companies which care about delivering great customer service often will use poker yokes to mistake-proof their service process to reduce mistakes. Obviously, a mistake can result in a terrible customer service experience. The first example I want to mention is there was a five-year-old child who was flown to the wrong airport. So the parents paid for this child to be flown solo to New York City. Instead, due to some mix-up, the boy was flown to Boston. Uh, so Boston is actually a great city and I spent six years there while I was doing my PhD. But the parents were clearly very worried when their child didn't arrive as was planned and they thought he might have been kidnapped. As a second example, there are two surgeons who accidentally removed the wrong kidney from the patient. The surgery was supposed to remove the right kidney, which was diseased, but instead the surgeons removed the left kidney, which was healthy. And later, when it, uh, they discovered the root cause of this error was that the x-ray was read from back to front, which caused the surgeons to think to mix up the two kidneys. Now, making mistakes is actually you know, something that happens na naturally to us because we are humans. We're not perfect. We're not robots. And in fact, the only people who never make mistakes are those who never try to do anything. So don't be afraid of making mistakes, but do be afraid of not learning from your mistakes. I want to take a small digression here to encourage students like yourselves not to be afraid of making mistakes. In particular, do speak up in class. Do answer questions, do ask questions so that I can answer your questions or your teachers can answer your questions and that gives you an opportunity to test and learn more. Don't be afraid of losing face or diu lian, uh, which is a Chinese idiom which means roughly being embarrassed when you make a mistake. All right, so back to business. What can or what should uh, the management of a company do to reduce mistakes that the staff make in serving and customers? As always, let's turn to Dilbert, who is the source of all wisdom in terms of management. Dilbert's boss is shown here. He has, he has two tufts of hair which are shaped oddly like devil's horns but I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Dilbert's boss says my job is to create an environment where employees will feel safe taking risks. My other job is punishing employees who make any kind of mistake. My point is I'm glad I don't have your job. That's a great attitude for senior leadership to have. Not so how should management help uh, employees not to make mistakes? Broadly speaking, there are two approaches to handling mistakes. There's the punishment, you're fired kind of approach. And there's the learning approach, where we try to take what we learn from the mistake to avoid it in the future. There's a figure of speech which says, don't hate the player hates the game. And what this roughly means is some, uh, sometimes problems that arise are due to the system uh, and weaknesses or problems in the system rather than on the individuals who operate within the system. So we believe that to reduce mistakes, what 
businesses often need to do is to improve the system rather than, than blaming individual employees. So use mistakes as an opportunity to learn and to continuously improve the system. And pokeyokes are very useful in terms of helping to reduce mistakes. So what are pokeyokes? All right, looking to Wikipedia, Pokayoke wa kojo nado no seizo rai ni sechi sareru sagyo misu o boshi suru shikumi sochi no koto and so on. Okay, right, sorry, wrong language. The point of this slide is to remind you or show you very clearly that Pokayoke comes from <coughs> Japan. So pokayoke, which is in the original Japanese looks like this, basically was originally designed to help equipment operators to avoid mistakes. If you want to translate this term into English, you might also call it mistake proofing or fail saving. Originally, it was developed by Shigeo Shingo as part of the famous Toyota production system. And while in its original context it was developed in, for manufacturing, similar principles can be applied to services. So poker yoke is basically defined as something that reduces mistakes by preventing, correcting, or drawing attention to human errors as they occur. And an example of a pokeyoke are SIM cards. So let's think for a minute. Why is a SIM card and a SIM card tray an example of the pokeyoke? I want to highlight in particular that a SIM card usually has one corner which seems to be cut out. And the tray, likewise, also seems to have a special spot covering that corner. Okay, so let's take a bit of time to think and to discuss. Dum 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 Okay. Okay. Then we did some discussion. Blah 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 blah. Okay, next. Next slide. Alright, so poker your gaze. One important thing to note is they reduce mirrors, er, mistakes as they occur. So it's no use if it only allows you to detect mistakes after the fact when it's too late to fix them. And that makes sense because if you know you detect a mistake but there's it's too late and there's no way to fix it, what's the point? Well, there is it's good for measurement purposes, but the customer has already been hurt and there's no way to fix that. All right, so in terms of serving customers, there are three types of T errors that we wish to avoid. Task errors, treatment errors, and tangible errors. Task errors basically refers to work that was done incorrectly, work done that was not requested, work that was done in the wrong order, or work that was done too slowly. At this point, I want to differentiate that uh, make the point that if work was done too slowly, this includes so-called process errors, if the process was not designed appropriately. But this does not include the issue of insufficient service capacity, because this just means you need more service. It's not that the process is wrong, it's just that you don't have enough staff or enough machines. Here are a few examples of task errors. So if you go to McDonald's and you order french fries and you get too few french fries in your packet, that's a task error. And one way that McDonald's prevents that from happening is they use a special scoop that's designed to grab the right amount of french fries for each packet size. Um, I went to a restaurant once and I ordered, actually in Boston, 
when I ordered their famous New England clam chowder. Uh, but mistakenly, I received a fish chowder. And it was only when I was halfway through eating my clam chowder, well, my fish chowder, which I thought was clam chowder, that I realized, wait a minute, where, why are there no clams in this clam chowder? Why is there so much fish? Fortunately, when I told the waiter this, they replaced my fish, half-eaten fish chowder with a new bowl of clam chowder. So I got to eat both clam chowder and fish chowder, which was nice, although I felt very full afterwards. To avoid mistakes in the ordering process, waiters are often trained to repeat the order verbally. Uh, another, the third example of task errors are if the food might be prepared or served in the wrong order. So for example, if maybe three separate tables, A, B, and C, order things, but the kitchen prepares food in the order C, B, A, then a would feel unhappy because they end up waiting the most, even though they ordered the first. So in the old days, a lot of the kitchen management was done using paper food slips that they would keep arranged in first in first out order. And a similar principle of first in first out still applies, even though more and more kitchens are now using electronic slips to manage the order of food delivery. Uh, food cooking. All right, now let's move on to the second type of T errors, treatment errors. Treatment errors are basically a failure to acknowledge the customer, to listen to the customer, or react appropriately. So basically, if the staff are not polite and attentive to customers, that's a treatment error. So here are two examples. The first example is when the call center service staff do not use a smiling voice when speaking to customers. So if, for example, you have some problems with your credit card or with your mobile phone plan, you often have a find a number to call and the people who work in that call, <clears throat> to take that call are basically people working in a call center. So one easy way to remind call center um, staff to smile is to place a mirror next in, in their cubicles or next to their desks where they can see themselves if they're smiling. What's interesting is that even though you cannot see the staff, you can hear in the voice whether they're smiling or if they're sad or if they're angry. See. So just listening to the tone of voice, you can learn a lot. And you do want to hear a pleasant, kind of generally happy service staff and not a sad or angry type. All right, next. Uh, at, if, if you're working at a McDonald's uh, or in another restaurant, you do, the staff do need to learn, they do need to use the proper language when interacting with customers. And one way to help them to do this is to train them to follow uh, or use freight language prescribed in a customer service manual. So for example, I found online that uh, if you visit a McDonald's and, and you see a, an employee there, the employee might say, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? And as the customer's ordering, the staff is supposed to ask, is there anything else? Or will that be all? all? After the customer finishes ordering, you should check, ask them to check the, the order on the screen by saying something like, is your order correct on the screen? And finally, you tell the customer, your total is you know, uh, $70 and thank you for you know, eating at McDonald's. All right, the, the third and last type of T errors are so-called tangible errors. Basically, those are errors that customers can detect via the five senses. And the five senses, of course, are taste, hearing, sight, smell, and touch. So uh, these errors include things like 
dirty facilities <laughs> uh, and tidy uniforms or you know smelly odor and stuff uh, spelling and layout mistakes so if there's spelling errors or layout errors like this which one I, which I did on purpose you can use a spell checker or a second pair of eyes to double check all documents to make sure they are a mistake. If staff are wearing dirty uniforms, okay, how do we avoid that error? So there are two solutions which, which you might propose. Maybe one solution is placing a mirror at the changing room exit. So is that a poker yoke? Why or why not? And the second solution is stocking extra clean uniforms in the Staff change the room. Is this a pokey okay? Why or why not? As, again, let's take a bit of time to discuss. Dum 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 Okay, discussion over. All right. So this to conclude this section of the lecture. What do we? What have we learned? We've learned that mistakes can ruin the customer service experience. And in particular, there are three types of T errors, tasks, treatment, and tangible that we want to address. We can use pokeyokes or mistake proofing to reduce mistakes when delivering service. And companies which care about delivering great customer service will be careful to incorporate these pokeyokes in their how they serve customers. All right, that's the end.